the worst truck I've ever had. The absolute worst truck I've ever had, and I swear I would never buy a It's been about a year and a half since I bought my last Ford pickup truck, which gives me enough time to make a review on it based on practical experience. Towing, hauling, and working. It's not my first Ford pickup truck, and it's not going to be my last, but it's also not the best Ford pickup truck that I've ever owned. Let's just get into today's video. So about four years ago, I bought this Ford F-150 paper hauler and it turned out to be my favorite truck of all time. It worked so much better than I ever expected this thing to do. Its performance in the snow was hands down beyond any expectations I ever had. It's handling, it's performance, it's drivability, the quality, the feel when you jumped in this thing was one of the best vehicles, period, that I'd ever been in of any weight size, category, race, rating, anything. I was so impressed with this truck that it made me fall back in love with Ford. I had fallen out of love with Ford for a number of reasons. I own a lot of different Ford pickup trucks and I've had a lot, a lot of different problems with Ford over the years. And in fact, so many problems that I had switched from Ford to ram but the writing was on the wall with the ram i was noticing right out of the gate small little problems and small problems out of the gate can add up to big problems down the road so because i had such a good experience with that ford f-150 i decided i was going to buy the next bigger version of the exact same truck. I mean, identical, almost in every way, shape, or form. It's just the 250, it's designed to haul, it's designed to tow, it's designed to plow. And this truck has gone to work over and over and over again. But it hasn't performed, handled, or been anywhere near the quality of the F-150 that we just looked at earlier. Let's just go over some of the laundry list of items right out of the gate. This truck's power steering pump failed. That was within the first 1,000 miles. I had problems with it. I'm still ha I have electrical problems with the truck to this date that still have not rep been repaired. I have the back door will never lock. I have to manually lock this door. The radio won't sync up properly and when you get a phone call the radio won't come back online. There's a laundry list of myriad of items that all add up to disappointment with this truck. Another thing that I've noticed, a severe issue I've noticed, when you're snow plowing, it doesn't shift as smooth as the ram. If you are snow plowing, let me, let me just put it into a way that maybe some of you guys that plow for a living can relate with. If you're plowing for hours on end and you're going forward, backward, forward, backward, you get into this rhythm where you're almost like you're floating. You're just going forward, and as you're coming forward, you step, put your foot on the brake, and you're shifting in reverse, and as soon as that truck goes to a stop, the wheels are spinning and you're going backward. And as soon as you're backing up, you're kissing that, you're coming right straight up to that curb, and you're kissing that curb because you've already got the truck in forward, and you're not clunking the truck, you're just making it float back and forward in the, through the lot. It's like dancing, it's a surreal feeling, it's an amazing feeling. And it's a feeling that you can't do in this truck because it shifts like a freaking lumberjack's wagon. Hey, what are you laughing at, Zach? What, you don't know how to operate a Ford? I know how to operate a Ford pretty well. So Zach runs this truck almost as much as I do, and I was telling I these- I run probably more than you, hauling loads and everything. You, it's just your lawn ornament right now. Okay. <laughs> Zach, How Zach. many loads have I hauled north? How many events have I gone out plowing in it? Okay, so you tell me, what do you think of this truck? Because I here's what I've I noticed. Like it. I just wish it was a shorter shorter cab so that way I could turn more. That's about How it. How do you like the shifting on it? Have you noticed that the shifting has a delay? It has almost a one second delay when you shift from forward to reverse. It, it, it kind of does, but you eventually get used to it, which I've gotten used to it. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to get used to it. When you're trying to be fast and efficient, this truck should almost become an extension of your body. Not like you're hopping in and operating a rig, but like you're actually just moving through space and this vehicle becomes a part of you. 
Yeah. Does that feel like that to you? Oh yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it, okay. It, when when at first when on our first event I stalled it a couple times shifting between the gears because I that delay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once you get used to it, then it's just a matter of letting it do its thing, shift, and go backwards or okay. Go well, how do you like the transmission in this truck? Eh, so so. Agreed. Oh, how do you like the eight point nine miles per gallon that you get no matter what you're doing? Uh, I think uh, I can burn through a half a tank depending, I think if I'm hauling air, I think I still burn through about a half a tank going to the cabin and back. It's a gasser and yes, that, that goes without saying, but it's the least fuel efficient gas truck that I've ever owned I, in my life. I've, I've driven this truck up to the cabin, hauling the same load that I've hauled with the Dodge and the Dodge went through a quarter tank and this went through a half a tank. Yep. It doesn't make a difference whether you have a load on or you don't have a load on. There is zero fuel efficiency with this truck. It's almost like it's fighting itself to go down the road. Yeah, I don't know if it's something in some gearings binding up somewhere or something's doing something somewhere. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not okay. a mechanic. What else have you noticed about the truck? When you do four wheel, it doesn't, it seems like it wants to slip out more. Or like it, it just wants to spin it wants to just spin the tires more than actually them grabbing so the ram in my experience is a, has a more seamless experience for pushing snow and being in slippery conditions where this one you can lock out you can put it in four-wheel drive and then there's a knob let's show these guys this knob and then crack the hood on this thing for me and we'll take a look at it so you don't just have four-wheel drive on this vehicle, but once you put it in four-wheel drive, you have this special little knob, and you pop this knob out, and now you're locking out the axles, which is pretty cool. And it does have different modes for snow, for roads, but you never use any of those different modes. It's almost like what, just don't even, I don't need them. I, I don't understand that when half the cars these days have like, oh, snow mode, sport mode, all this other stuff. Like, so you have to learn have to learn to turn it on and put it into the actual mode in order to go through what it is where back in the day you just put it in four wheel and go so under the hood we do have the snow plow package on it we've got the dual batteries on it and if you want to work on this engine unlike others that are crammed in here and crammed in like tuna in a can this thing does give you at least enough space that you can do some basic maintenance on it everything is clearly labeled on it well, so there are some benefits to this truck, you know, simple things that they've done. Okay, what? What? When you get when you get into actual really deep stuff, you actually have to lock your in four low in order to get this thing to actually move. I've never had to lock my ram in four low for plowing ever. And I'm not saying I wouldn't buy another ram. No, I'm not going to buy a ram just because the ram has a lot of small electrical issues, but it's the ram pickup truck with it's an older truck with more miles, has had less problems than this truck has had right out of the gate it, with less yeah, miles. Yeah, but Timmy's had everything under the sun wrong with his truck. Yes, so we bought two identical Ram trucks. Timmy's looks like this one. Yep. And then yours was just a single cab. Yes, so Timmy's Ram has get, had it, it, transmission yep. problems, diff lock problems, electrical problems. And all he does is drive it. He, 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 and he plows he with plows, it. He plows snow. And he does some towing and hauling. Like with us, we're doing a lot more work with... Yeah, towing and hauling and whatnot and putting loads on it. Yeah, yeah. So this truck hauls, hauls loads every single week. So it gets a lot of work. So we've had a lot of experience putting it to work. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm thinking about switching to a, to a Denali for my next truck. I wouldn't I've mind. I've never driven a Denali. I'd like to get a diesel. I'd like to, I, I've yeah, heard well, like good said, things Al about Alex them. Alex is freaking trying to break down the damn everyone's door saying, get diesel, get diesel, get diesel. I kind of wanted diesel. So. I wouldn't mind. I, like all, every, every the rancher and person I know that does like horses and all the agricultural, diesel, all the way. Yeah because they're hauling even bigger loads than what we are. Over. Well, we switched to gasser because we've, I, I firmly believe that. But you also got it in when they were doing all those switching over and all the efficiency and all that other junk when they were just prototyping all the diesel engines. Agreed. Uh, and also uh, my experience has been that the rest of the truck will fall apart when you use it for work. 
like for a pure work truck, the truck is going to fall apart around the engine. Your diff locks are going to go, your trannies are going to go, uh, you're going to have front end problems, you're going to have all of these nitpicky things and you should be getting rid of your truck long before it starts to get to that nitpick stage because that's where it starts to drive you crazy. You, the truck may be paid for and you may be justifying that you own it, but my opinion is about that stage, the, the fact that it's out of commission, the fact that you're not working, you're frustrated, isn't worth it. Just get rid of the truck before it gets to that point and your engine should still be absolutely fine for all practical purposes. But our, we've got two, uh, two Ford older trucks, 20, well, like 2014s. We've had a lot of problems with those Fords, with it, engines, it, with Blaine's every... old truck just started uh, having problems. What? Uh, Blaine's old truck, the, that one? No, the, that's the, had problems. Oh, that's had quite a few problems. Okay, the, I never heard about the other problems. Oh, jeez. We've, we've put so much I money into rebuilding that truck. Here. We, we've had to bolt back together I don't know how many times. Yeah, we've had plenty of problems with both of our older Fords. So you tell me, will you guys... GMC diesel are they decent i was going i was looking at before i bought that truck i was looking at a ram diesel and when my salesperson stopped me and said hey you know the problem with these diesel engines is easily fixable and i'm like wait a minute what and he said mike said his name's mike he's with uh fury motors good dude He's like, um, yeah, you know, it's just a simple problem with, it, with to, to fix these diesel engines on these Rams. And I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't know there was an issue with the Ram trucks. The engine, he's like, yeah, you just got to warm them up for 20 minutes before you drive them so that the def doesn't freeze on them. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. So then I started to ask around and Dustin with TN uh, Top Notch Equipment out of Rogers had the same problem with his uh, Ram uh, engine freezing up on them and other problems with it so that completely scared me from getting a ram diesel and those denali's look nice so you guys tell me am i nuts for switching to a denali the worst truck i've ever had the absolute worst truck i've ever had and i swear i would never buy another gmc was a 3500 dually diesel and it was when i first got started working and i I I swore I would never buy another GMC just because of that truck. I swore off from it going up a hill, it would barely break 45 miles an hour. That's floored all the way, pedal to the metal. I couldn't get this thing to move. It was gutless. It was problematic. It had electrical problems. It was a GMC pile of junk, but that was also two over two or three decades ago. So I'm hoping that they've improved their, GMC's improved their performance since then. And the Nabalis are undeniably a gorgeous vehicle. And it's just, I'm to that point where I want a truck that I can work, but I can also enjoy it. I want to spoil myself. And you know what, I get it, you guys. Some of you guys want to spoil yourselves as well. You want something nice, something that you're proud of. And you don't want something that you're wrenching on. So if that's the case, what truck would you buy? Would you buy a Ford? Would you buy a diesel? Would you buy a gasser? Would you buy a Godzilla? What would you buy if you wanted a dependable work truck, but you also wanted to have a little bit of luxury and have a little bit of fun while you're driving it? Because I think we all deserve that. I mean, we only got so much time on this planet, you guys. So why have something that you're frustrated with? I mean, there's a difference between a truck that's just gonna go out day to day to day and work, 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 and you're not going to spend a lot of time in, but if there's also a difference with a truck that's gonna hopefully make your life better and give you a little bit of enjoyment, and that's what I'm looking at my, as my next truck. What should that be? Comment down below, but that's it for this one. God bless you guys, go get them, and stay safe out there.